Hello and welcome to another video. In this video, I'll be covering two very important concepts called features and features of size. These two terms are used in almost every single video in this course, so I want you to fully understand them and get comfortable with their definitions. I'll start with features. Ready? Let's go. A feature in simple terms is any surface on your part you can point to. For example, a simple box has six features. Every side of it is considered a single feature. A cylinder has three features. The entire cylindrical side surface is one feature, and the top and bottom caps will give you two more features. Basically, whenever you have an abrupt change in your geometry, you're probably dealing with a new surface. So far so good? Great. Now let's see what features of size are. Features of size are still considered features, but they have some very specific requirements compared to your regular features that make them special. They are very important in GDNT because you can do things with them that you cannot do with regular features. Right now, let's just focus on what they are. You will learn benefits of using them later in this course. Features of size or FOS are features that have points on opposite sides of a reference. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, first, let's see what I mean by reference. A reference can be a center axis, a center point, or a midplane. Cylindrical features have a center axis, spherical features have a center point, and two parallel surfaces have a midplane. Now, all these three types create opposed points, right? Think about it. In a cylindrical feature, you have points on the opposite sides of each other compared to your center axis. In spherical features, you have opposed points compared to a center point, and in tabs and slots, you have opposed points on both sides of a midplane. Another condition for a feature of size is that the reference has to be reproducible, meaning it has to be the same reference on every component that you manufacture. One very easy way to check if you have opposed points or not is to use a caliper. Many people know this as the caliper rule. It basically says, if you can grab a feature with the jaws of your caliper, you have a feature of size. Also make sure you use the jaws and not the bottom rod. The bottom rod is used to measure depth. There is one last requirement which is added in 2009 standard. Features of size need to have size dimensions which are directly toleranced. This means you need to have tolerance values right next to your size dimension, otherwise it won't be considered a feature of size. So far so good? Great. Now it's important to know that features of size have two types. We have regular features of size and irregular features of size. The side cylindrical face of a pin the surface of a sphere, the parallel faces on a tab or a slot are all regular features of size. I have a specific video that explains irregular features of size which have a type A and type B. You don't need to know what they are at this stage and it might only get you confused. You will learn about what they are down the road so don't worry at this moment. Now before I go, I would like to tell you something else. The definition for features of size in GDNT book is not very specific and there are many different interpretations when it comes to special cases. For example, let's say you have a cylindrical feature that only goes 270 degrees around the axis or let's say you have half of a sphere. Is that still a regular feature of size? Short answer is yes. As long as you have at least 180 degrees of a cylindrical or spherical feature, you have a regular feature of size. A 179 degree cylinder does not give you opposed points if you think about it. So keep that in mind. So far so good? Great. I'll see you in the next video.